Hello everyone. The topic is biostatistics from public health dentistry. Now, what is this biostatistics? So now, for example, if you want to do a research or a study in which you want to see which type of sugar it is more cariogenic, that means like there are various forms of sugar that are your sucrose, fructose, then glucose, maltose, dilutol. So there are various forms of sugar, but it's not like every sugar, they are same cariogenic to your teeth. So there are like, you want to do this research in which you want to see which type of sugar is more cariogenic. So that study, it comes into your epidemiology. Like you're doing that study, you form a group of, group of a people in which you select a group of people in which you're going to do this study. So you give them different form of sugars and then you do the study on it. So after that, you get some results. So that becomes your epidemiology. But now that results are converted into some numerical values. Now, for example, for sugar, so now in the form of sugar, if sucrose, it is more, so you have seen the result as sucrose, it is more cariogenic than any other sugar. Or you can say sucrose is cariogenic and xylitol is non-cariogenic. But how much percent? So that percent, that numerical value is given by this biostatistics. So the analysis and the interpretation, it is done using this biostatistics. So you have done that studies. So in that studies, now you're going to analyze and you're going to interpret that yes, sucrose is like almost 100% cariogenic when you're comparing it with xylitol. So that means your xylitol, it is non-cariogenic. So that analysis is done by biostatistics. So it's like epidemiology and biostatistics, they are sister science or they are sister disciplines. So epidemiology, it collects the facts. You're collecting the facts which you want to do the study of. So it is collecting the facts relating to the group of population in places, time and situations. So this is your epidemiology. Now biostatistics is, now you convert all these facts. So you have collected that facts, you have collected that studies and then you convert it into some figures that yes, this much percent is that. It means like this much percent of your sugar, of that form of sugar is more cariogenic. So you're giving that percentage. So that is your biostatistics. And now in the end of this biostatistics, you again translate them into the fact, interpreting the significance of the results. So now the fact you have seen that yes, sugar in the sugar, sucrose is more cariogenic. Then you have interpreted it and then you have given that value. You have given that numerical value. Now, lastly, what you do in biostatistic is then you give the fact out of it that yes, sugar in sugar, sucrose is more cariogenic. It's like around 100% cariogenic when you're comparing it with xylitol or it is 50% cariogenic when you're comparing it with an other, other sugar, like it can be fructose. So that is nothing but your biostatistics. So analysis and the interpretation, it is done using this biostatistics. So the person who is considered as the father of the health science for this biostatistics is John Grant. Then the statistics, so statistics, the definition is so statistics is the science of you compile, you classify and you tabulate the numerical values. So you're compiling all the results that you have seen. Then you're classifying it and you're tabulating that results in the numerical data. You're giving that new numbers. So numbers is nothing but your biostatistics and collecting that data, collecting the results of the study that you want to do is your epidemiology. And then expressing the result in a mathematical or a graphical form is your statistics. So this is your statistics. So biostatistics is that branch of statistics which is concerned with the mathematical facts and the data which is related to the biological events. So biological is which is related to the humans. So this is nothing but your biostatistics. So biostatistics, the purpose of the statistics is it is to assemble, organize and analyze the data. So you're assembling it, you're organizing whatever your data was, whatever the studies you have done and then you're analyzing it. And then you have seen, like you have done the studies on 50 patients. So you are going to analyze like, yes, in this patient, when you're giving them sucrose, so you have given sucrose to 10 patients, then you're giving xylitol to 10 patients. So you have seen that, yes, in 10 patients who were on sucrose, they all have caries. So that is like you're going to analyze your data properly in this biostatistics. So this is all about the biostatistics introduction. Now the uses are, so first is to test whether the difference between two population, it is real or by chance occurrence. So now when you're taking, so when you're doing some survey or when you're doing some studies, so you consider two population in it. One is the case and one is the control. Now we have seen, for example, for the sugar one only. So in that, 
case are the ones in which you're going to give the sugar and control are the ones in which you're going to in which you're not going to give that sugar so these are the controlled ones so you're going to see or you're going to test whether the difference that you're getting in your results it is real or it is by chance the next is to study the correlation between the attributes in the same population now in the same population it's like when you're doing some study so in same population it's like when you are selecting some population for the studies so in that population also you will find various things so various variables that can be the age of the patient or some disease of the patient or the amount of for example if you're giving the sugar one only so the amount of sugar so these are like various attributes in the same population so you're studying correlation between that attributes next is to evaluate the efficiency of the vaccines to measure the mortality and the morbidity mortality is the death rate and morbidity is the disease rate so you're going to measure that rate like in numerical values with this biostatistic then to evaluate the achievements of the public health programs if you're doing a public health program for example if you're doing a pits and fisher sealant program that is your public health program so you're going to see or you're going to evaluate the achievements that yes i am getting good achievements when i'm doing pits and fisher in these and this like in so and so age of patients so these are your achievements you're evaluating with this biostatistic as you're giving that number the next is to fix the priorities and to help promote the health legislation and to create administrative standards for the oral health so these are the uses of your biostatistic the next is the basis for the statistical analysis so it is based on three primary entities that is the population set of characteristics that is the variable and the probability distribution the population is the one which you are selecting for a particular study so for example the people that you are selecting for your study for example you are doing a study in which you are going to see if you have like introduced a new drug so you want to see the efficiency of that drug then you're going to select a group of people which have the same disease that you're going to see the efficiency of the drug on so this becomes your population on which you're going to do your studies the next is the set of characteristics or the variables now it's like when you're selecting a population so like you have selected the population in which everyone have the disease but it's not like like all are of same age or all of our all of them they are of same gender so these are the variables so they can be male females or they can be of different age the severity of the disease may be different in every patient so this becomes the variability so that is the variables so they are of two types that is qualitative and quantitative qualitative is categorical and quantity is nothing but the numbers so in qualitative you have again two types that is nominal and ordinal nominal is when they are unordered and ordinal as the name says if they are in in order so they are classified in order so nominal are the ones like gender the blood group so they don't have any order so it's like when a person he says i have this blood group so it's obvious they don't have any order for this but now when a person he says i have this like the pain for this disease in me it is mild but the other person he'll come and he's he'll say i have moderate type of pain so for me the pain is too much so there can be severe type of pain so this becomes the order so you're going to classify it or you're going to categorize it into the form of the order of it so in that it can be the stage of the disease or the pain so the pain it can be like mild moderate or severe the next is the quantitative quantitative is the numerical so numericals again there are two types discrete and continuous so discrete is the particular value so for example it's like number of teeth with caries so in this you're just seeing the value like how many teeth they are affected with the caries so this is discrete now continuous is when you give a range so you're going to see like if you're going to give a range in the weight so you're going to give a range like 50 to 60 kilograms so this becomes your range so you're going to classify you're going to like do this analysis statistical analysis depending on this range so that is your quantitative the next is the probability distribution so probability distribution it is the most crucial link between the population and the characteristics of them so it helps to inference so it helps us to draw the inference on the population which is based on the sample observation so it's like it is to enumerate the different values the variable can have and how frequently it each value appears in the population so now you have selected a population then you are seeing these variables so this probability distribution is when you're going to see like for example if in the population you have selected 50 people so in this 50 people i have seen there were like around 40 males and only 10 females so you're going to see the probability distribution that means how 
like how much it is affected in that population like which type of variable is affected at how much rate in that particular population that is nothing but your probability distribution so you are seeing the probable distribution of that particular variable in that population so for example it can be like this particular blood group they are more affected with that particular disease you are seeing the probability distribution of them so these are your basis for the statistical analysis next important is the majors of the central tendency or it is known as statistical averages so it is a central value around which the other values they are distributed so you are giving a particular like a value for example you are doing a study so in that you give a particular value that is you give a like a mean or a median or a mode so what i'm what's what all they are i'm going to explain now so the main objective of measuring this central tendency it is to condense the entire mass of data and to facilitate the comparison so you are going to condense everything so you are going to see so you are doing a study so you, are, you have like collected all everything and then you are condensing it and then you are giving a particular value that yes this particular thing it is like you now as we have seen for the sugar so you, you are going to like give that central value that is the main value that yes sugar in sugar xylitol it is 0% cariogenic and sucrose it is 50% cariogenic than other type of sugar rather than xylitol so that 50% so you are giving that central value that particular value that becomes a central tendency so the main objective is to condense it so the most common measures of central tendency are mean median and mode so the first is the arithmetic mean so it is obtained by adding the individual observation and then dividing it with the total number of observation and it is the simplest of all the three measures so it is calculated which is using this formula that is sigma xi upon n sigma is nothing but sum of xi is the individual observation and n is the total number of observation so when you are like for example i'm going to give an example like after explaining all the three measures so you can compare how exactly all the three measures will look like now what are the advantages of this arithmetic mean so it is easy to calculate as just like adding all the values and then it is dividing by the total number of values and is most useful for all the averages and disadvantage is it is influenced by the abnormal values now if in example we see if we are considering 10 people and in that 10 people when you are considering the values this values they are approximately near to each other but if like among the 10 children or among the 10 people if one per, if one person he have some abnormal value that can influence your mean so that becomes a disadvantage and sometimes it may look ridiculous like ridiculous if you are calculating a large group if you are seeing the mean for a larger group of people so when you become so when you are just calculating so when you keep on calculating like such a large group it looks like ridiculous so the next is the median so when all the observations they are arranged either in the ascending order or the descending order the middle observation it is known as median so median is nothing but the middle value in the distribution such that one half of the units in the distribution they have a value smaller than or equal to the median and one half it has a value which is higher than or equal to the median so what do you do in this now for example in this case the following are the number of visits to the dentist by 10 people so this is now the 10 people it becomes a even number so why it is like important to see this even and odd i'm going to explain so these are the following numbers of visits so first what we do in median so to measure the median first you're going to arrange it in the ascending or the descending order so we are arranged them in the ascending order so these are like the studies or the results that you got then to measure this median you're like arranging them in the ascending order so after that what are you going to do for this even number so if it is odd number then what are you going to do for example if there's one more patient so if there are 11 patients so if there's one more value which is 15 so you are going to like arrange so you are going to write it after 13 so in that what are you going to see is the middle value it becomes your median so for 11 you have five values which are like higher than the middle value and five are the units or the values which are smaller than the median value so for here over here 1 2 3 4 5 so these are like the five values which are smaller than this five and over here these are your five values which are higher than this five so your five it becomes your median so that is the middle value but now in if it is a even number so now in this even number like you don't have a middle value so what you going to do in this is you going to add two middle values so over here so these are your four values which is ahead of this and four values which is behind it so in this you are going to like take a average of this two middle values 
so in even number what you're going to do is you're going to add this two numbers that is your four and five so this becomes your two middle numbers so you're going to like add them up and then you're going to divide it by deep by two so as you're like considering only two numbers so because of that you're dividing it by two so after that you get the results so that becomes the 4.5 percent so this is nothing but the median for even number you're taking the average of two middle number and for the odd number the middle number is your median in case of even the average of two middle values is taken so this becomes your median the last is the more so it is the value in the series of observation that occurs with the greatest frequency now for example if the age of eruption of canine so these are the particular ages for eight children so now what will be the mode b so in this now you can see the six so the six years it appears three times in the sequence the seven it appears two times five it appears two times and eight it appears only one time in this particular sequence for eight children so the more it will be the value with the greatest frequency so it is six at six is appearing three times in this particular sequence so the more it will be whichever the value is of greatest frequency in that particular sequence so your six is the mode for this particular observation now when the mode it is ill defined so there can be scenarios in which you will see there are three six or there are and there are three seven so it is ill defined so now in this which is the mode so it is calculated by this relation that is mode is equal to three into median minus two into mean so after this you're going to measure so for this particular observation first you're going to measure the median and then you're going to measure measure the mean so whatever the mean and the median it comes out you're going to apply this in this particular formula that is 3 into whatever your median has come minus 2 into whatever your mean has come and after that you get the particular mode for this now there's a very commonly asked mcqs in your central tendency so they'll ask which type of measure of the central tendency is highest is the best when you're considering in the ordinal form so ordinal as the name says ordinal order so you have to remember it as ordinal is the order so the ones which you're arranging in the order it becomes your median so when you're arranging them or whenever you're considering in the ordinal form so the median is the best type is the best measure of your central tendency but now the next is when it is nominal form nominal is the normal value now in the mean we have seen it is affected by the extremes values so more it is a nominal type because it is not affected by the extreme values so in this mode you get the value of the highest frequency that is greatest frequency so in this it is not affected by the extreme values so it is nominal that is normal so nominal is nothing but mode and the last is when it is metric in metric form so in metric form is when you give that particular formula or when you give that numerical formula so it becomes your mean so these are like this is just a mcq which is commonly asked that which type of the ordinal form of central tendency is most commonly formed is most commonly found the next is the nominal and the next is the matrix metric so metric is the mean ordinal order is the median and nominal normal values is the mode so this is all about mean median and mode for example now as i have said we are going to consider all these three so this is, is like a scenario so this is a common scenario for all these three things so the number of the decayed teeth in 10 children is so the number of decayed teeth is this particular particular teeth a decay for this 10 children so mean is when we have seen the formula as sum of the individual values upon the total number of observation so after that what you're going to do in mean is now you're going to add all these values so 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 1 plus 3 plus 0 plus 10 plus 2 plus 3 plus 8 so that comes out to be your 34 now it is divided by the total number of observations the total number of observations so in which you're going to see the observation is the 10 children so in 10 children you're seeing this particular observation so this n is nothing but your total observation so this is upon 10 so your mean is 3.4 so this becomes your mean now median as we have seen we are going to arrange it in the ascending order now there are 10 children so it is an even number so we are going to take an average of two middle numbers so first we have arranged them in the ascending order then the average of two middle number is two plus three so the middle number two middle number are two plus two and three so over here you can see there are four numbers which are present in front of this and there are four numbers which are present behind this two numbers so you're going to take an average of this two so that is two plus three upon two upon two is when you're taking because you're taking these two numbers for the average 
so it comes out to be as 2.5 and more is you have seen now it is measured depending upon that the one which occurs in the greatest frequency now in this series on this observation you can see two it occurs three times when you're comparing with the other number of decay p so a mode it is the two as it is like seen three times in this particular observation so this is all about your central tendency the majors for your central tendency that is the mean median and mode was all about the first part of your biostatistics that is how you're going to measure or what are the central tendency measures and even i have covered about the uses what exactly your biostatistics is now in the next video i'm going to cover about the majors of dispersion now over here we have seen we got the central value the particular one value but now it's not like always you're giving that particular value and every person in that particular group will have that same value for example if you're considering the weight of 60 people so you have given a mean for it as 50 kilos 50 kilograms so it's not like all the 60 people will have that 50 kilogram so there will be like some variation or dispersion so that comes in the majors of dispersion so you're going to consider that dispersion so how dispersed they are so how values they are dispersed so that comes in this into the majors of dispersion so there are basically three majors of dispersion that is range mean deviation and standard deviation so i'm going to explain them with like a very good example so that you can understand what exactly they are and then in later videos i'm also going to cover about the normal curve why it is known as gaussian curve or why it is known as normal distribution and later i'm going to cover all the topics from biostatistics epidemiology and even from research methodology because now in your public health industry these three topics are such topics that are like most confusing most difficult and they are like most volatile you cannot remember them or you cannot understand these three topics like very quickly and but the problem is these three topics are the most important topics from your phd like you are 100 percent going to get questions from all these three topics in your exams in the form of laqs or saqs but you are going to get you're going to get these three questions from these three topics in your exam so you should know all these three topics very well from your phd and later i'm going to cover all those topics from all these three topics and that was all about this particular part of your biostatistics thank you so much